Technology just keeps accelerating at a blistering pace, moving faster than a cheetah chasing its prey across the plains. We're surrounded by devices and capabilities that would seem like utterly incomprehensible sorcery to people from centuries past. Just imagine for a moment trying to explain the concept of a modern smartphone to a peasant farmer from the medieval times. Aye, but how doth this glass window knoweth where I doth tap upon its surface? Is there some sort of dark, satanic magic contained within? Yeah, you'd probably get burned at the stake right then and there for conspiring with the devil and wielding witchcraft. While the touchscreen interface seems miraculous by the standards of the 1300s, we know it's not actual magic or alien technology left behind by some ancient extraterrestrial visitation. Nah, the touchscreen is merely another brilliant invention courtesy of human ingenuity and our continual quest to understand and employ the laws of science. But just how do these handy dandy little touch displays actually work? Let's pull back the curtain! Traditional input devices known as resistive touchscreens have been around for many decades. Believe it or not, their existence predates the first capacitance patent filed in 1983. These touchscreens function by using a finger to alter capacitance. Initially developed as a cost-effective alternative to other touchscreen technologies, resistive touchscreens have progressed from analog designs to self-capacitance structures. These structures are capable of using a finger to sense pressure and position. The underlying concept behind the first touchscreens was remarkably simple. Two flexible layers of conductive material separated by tiny insulating gaps. When you press down on the outer surface with your finger or a stylus, the two conductive layers make contact at that single point. This allows an electrical current to flow between the layers at the precise location of the touch. By applying a voltage across the layered grid and measuring the resistance across the entire surface, the screen can detect exactly where the two layers make contact. It's like a giant game of hot and cold. More resistance means you're further from the touch point. Areas with less resistance are hotter and indicate proximity to the touch location. While rudimentary, this resistive touch technology was the backbone of many early touch devices like ATMs, kiosks, PDA stylus endpoint, and even the original Nintendo DS gaming systems. It's a clever method for such simple hardware construction. Pretty impressive if you think about it, actually. However, resistive touch does have some key limitations. The flexible top layer is vulnerable to damage and wear over time from constant pressing with a finger or a stylus. It's also not good for reliably detecting multi-touch inputs like the pinch and zoom gestures we're accustomed to on smartphones. This shortcoming led to the development of an entirely new touch approach. The first patent for a different kind of multi-touch technology, capacitative touchscreens, came in 1975 by G. Samuel Hurst. He created this during his PhD studies at the University of Kentucky. Capacitative touchscreens changed input devices and led to the development of tablets. The first design used two electrically conducting layers with insulation between them. This allowed the touchscreen to sense touches from fingers or styluses by recognizing changes in capacitance. This is the core idea behind capacitative touchscreens, which use capacitance for touch detection. Unlike resistive, capacitative touchscreens don't rely on flexible stacked layers. Instead, they utilize a fully solid, rigid substrate coated with a transparent conductive material like indium tin oxide. This forms an electrified grid that creates a uniform electromagnetic field across the entire display when voltage is applied. The key to capacitative touch is that the human body is a conductive, electrolytic material made up of all sorts of dissolved ions and minerals. When you touch the screen with your bare finger, you create a tiny capacitor at that point that distorts the screen's electromagnetic field. This capacitative coupling between your finger and the screen can be precisely measured and located across the entire grid. In essence, the capacitative touch controller is constantly scanning the grid looking for anomalies in the energized field that indicate a touch event and its coordinates. And unlike resistive, capacitative touch supports multi-touch input, enabling all those handy pinch, zoom, rotate, and scrolling gestures we take for granted on our phones and tablets. But it gets even more impressive from here. While capacitative touch works great for our conductive human bodies, it was never intended to respond to non-conductive materials like gloves or styli. 
This gave rise to even more advanced sensing methods. Resistive touchscreens are a budget-friendly option compared to other touchscreen technologies like capacitance or infrared. These screens work by using finger pressure to activate, whereas capacitative touchscreens rely on the body's electrical properties. Resistive touchscreens can also be very precise when properly calibrated. They even use a type of capacitance to sense touches. However, there are downsides to resistive touchscreens. They tend to use more power because of an active circuit layer. They also don't last as long as other touchscreens because of wear and tear. Over time, contact between the layers can lead to ghosting or inaccurate readings if not maintained properly. When picking a touchscreen technology, consider factors like durability, precision, power use, and how it fits your needs. With features like multi-touch and the growing popularity of capacitative screens on consumer devices, it's clear that capacitative touchscreens will continue to be important in our ever-evolving technological world. Have you ever tried using a capacitative touchscreen while wearing gloves or mittens? Unless they're specialized conductive gloves, you've probably had no luck getting any response from tapping or swiping the display. That's because traditional capacitative sensors are programmed to specifically detect and only respond to the electrical properties of a bare human finger. Most capacitative controllers actually incorporate touch rejection firmware that is designed to ignore input from other materials besides skin. This helps prevent accidental taps and activations from random objects dropping onto the screen surface, as well as keeping you from filling up your photo gallery with pictures of your butt from inside your pocket. However, this limitation opened up opportunities for new sensing technologies to bridge the gap. Some more advanced touchscreens use ultrasonic waves that create a uniform field across the display surface. When any solid object touches the screen, it disrupts the wave field at that point which can be detected. This allows the screen to register input from fingers, gloves, styli, and other objects. Other touch methods imply an infrared grid system to detect touch locations based on thermal imaging and heat signatures. As long as the object containing the screen has a different temperature than the surrounding area, its touch point can be spatially mapped. This allows for multi-touch with literally any input source, including inanimate objects. And the possibilities keep evolving from here as researchers develop new ways to enhance touch sensitivity, palm rejection, hover detection, and even the ability to sense pressure or hovering objects without ever physically touching the surface. The future just keeps getting closer, and we keep getting older. One of the most significant recent advancements in touch technology comes from Apple in the form of 3D Touch, first introduced in 2015's iPhone 6S. This innovative system employs capacitative sensors combined with a microscopic deformation ink layer underneath the display stack. By introducing new firmware to sense varying degrees of pressure across this deformation layer, 3D Touch enables all sorts of nuanced gestures based on light, medium, and firm presses. Things like peak and pop previews, pressure sensitive drawing, quick app switching shortcuts, and more intuitive ways to interact with the user interface. But consumer tech companies aren't stopping there. Upcoming and conceptual touch systems could eventually allow users to reach through displays directly into simulated 3D virtual worlds. Or controlled devices via sophisticated hand tracking and motion gestures recognition without ever physically contacting a screen. We're even seeing experimentation around the ability to transmit tactile sensations and textures through piezoelectric actuators underneath touch surfaces. Imagine being able to feel the grooves of a carved wooden surface or the ridges and imperfections of a 3D printed object, all by dragging your fingers across a flat display. While these technologies may seem like modern day witchcraft or sorcery to the untrained eye, they're simply the result of human curiosity continually pushing the boundaries of what's possible through science and engineering. Where touch interfaces go from here is anybody's guess but you can be sure more intuitive and immersive experiences lie ahead. So, while that medieval peasant burning you at the stake for touchscreen wizardry might seem ridiculous to us today, the rapid pace of innovation makes you wonder, in 200 years, will our great-great-grandchildren look back at us the same way and scoff at how primitive and rudimentary our current tech seems by their standards? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed geeking out with us over the magic of touchscreens, be sure to smash that like button. Drop a comment below sharing your earliest or fondest memories with touch devices. 
and subscribe so you never miss the next deep dive into the technologies we can't keep our grubby little fingers off of.